Um, and one night uh, in October of 99, um, so just uh, eight years ago last month, um, I woke up during the night and, uh, you know, you know, like sometimes if you're, um, wait, if you're trying to wake yourself out of, out of a dream, you have to like shake yourself to move. Because when, when you're sleeping, your brain gives your body the cue not to move um, so that you'll stay asleep. Well, I woke up in that like in-between state um, where for a moment I felt frozen and couldn't move. And at that time, I, I felt a presence in the room uh, which terrified me. And uh, I heard a voice which was a woman's voice, which is very strange because being brought up Jewish, um, even though I, was, I considered myself a feminist, I always felt like if I ever heard the voice of God, it would be a man. <laughs> this uh, voice said, this woman's voice said, some things are not meant to be known. Some things are meant to be understood. And then I managed to, to, to uh, shake myself awake, and I was so uh, scared uh, and wondering what was that? And uh, I went to my mother and stepfather's house that night for dinner. I was telling them about this bizarre thing that happened. And uh, then I became convinced over dinner that that line that I heard in my sleep must be in the Bible somewhere. So in my mind, I was directed to open up the Bible to Romans uh, 5.1. And I did. And it said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what did I want most in my life? Peace with God. And because uh, as I mentioned, I was suffering from, from depression and seeking peace and love, you know, everywhere, not finding it. Almost everywhere, everybody, wherever but the church. <laughs> and so I realized then that the message I heard in the night was the answer to an unspoken question that I had, that the question of how, of how can I believe if I don't have proof? And the, the message of some things are not meant to be known was that some things are not meant to be known through external knowledge. It's what um, I believe uh, St. Thomas wrote in the Tantum Ergo, uh, Sensuum Defectui. Our senses alone are not enough to completely um, perceive God. Only faith uh, can, can uh, completely uh, perceive him. And so that was the message of some things are meant to be understood. Uh, the message of Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so I realized that if I, then that if I had the faith, that the knowledge would be added to me. So uh, God bless my, my mother uh, and my stepfather because I asked them what do I do now and, and uh, I believe it was my mother who who gave me a Bible that had the sinner's prayer in it, which is a Protestant prayer, similar to the act of contrition, uh, uh, acknowledging being a sinner and asking Christ to come into your heart. And so I got down on my knees that night and said the sinner's prayer. And I woke up the next morning completely healed of my depression. And it was, it was exciting and wonderful and really scary because I'd always used my depression as this crutch thinking, well, if life ever gets too bad, I have this out. I can kill myself. And so to no longer have that, to, to realize that, I, that, that, that there really was a God and that, Jesus, and that Jesus was his son and that God cared about me, um, it, that gave my life a, a meaning and a purpose. So that meant that I had to learn how to be happy and how to live hopefully and how to live as though I believed I had a future. Uh, so that, that was the beginning of my journey as a Christian. It was when I began to be drawn into the church, uh, largely through the prayers and encouragement of readers of my blog who were following me, including uh, Robert N. Going, who is here today, whom I've never <laughs> met, who began reading my blog um, right at the time that I was um, seriously uh, about to make the decision to uh, enter the church um, two and a half, uh, just over two and a half years ago.